You're tuned in to Maroon TV News. Coming up on Maroon TV News, the student community was shocked by the protests at the University of Chicago Medical Center. A new movie theater opens in Harper Court. And sports with Vicente Fernandez. Welcome to Maroon TV News. My name is Taylor Schwimmer, and here are this week's top stories. A protest at the University Medical Center ended in what some are calling police brutality. Last Monday, a sit-in took place at the Medical Center in an effort to raise awareness about the lack of a Level 1 trauma center on the city's south side. The University Hospital had an adult trauma center until 1988, when the hospital determined that a trauma center was too much of a drain on its resources. The last trauma center on the south side closed in 2008 with Michael Reese Hospital. Calls for a new trauma center began in 2010 after Damien Turner was shot on the south side. Turner was transported 10 miles to the trauma center at Northwestern Memorial Hospital, but ultimately did not survive. Turner's mother, along with university students and other members of the community, were present at the protest last Sunday. Shortly after it began, UCPD arrived to remove the protesters from the medical center property, arresting four people in the process. The four individuals were later released. Last Friday, a march on campus was organized to bring more attention to the absence of a trauma center. More than 100 participants marched the U of C administration building to call for equal health care rights. Members of the group Student Health Equity, or SHE, are with us today to talk about their role in the trauma center debate. Ryan McNamara has the interview. The recent protests over the absence of an adult trauma center at the University of Chicago Medical Center have sparked a debate about the necessity of an adult trauma center in one of the country's most dangerous neighborhoods. I'm joined by two of the founders for Students of Health Equity, Michael McCowan and Olivia Woolham, to talk about the university's lack of an adult trauma center. Olivia, Michael, how are you doing? Hi, good thing. You, you were both at the protest. Yeah. I assume. Well, what, what were you all thinking when you know, police started kicking people out? Well, so I was, I was very shocked. I mean, my, my interactions with UCPD have been, um, have been both through participating in this campaign and as you know, a student walking around campus seeing, um, seeing UCPD cruisers. Uh, I live at 50 First and Ellis, and sometimes a UCPD cruiser hangs out um, in this little cul-de-sac near, mm -hmm. near where I live, and it's, it's great to kind of feel like you have, um, you have a presence you know, in, in, the, in the neighborhood, kind of taking stock of everything. But it was really shocking to me um, how they responded. Uh, just with, with basically no um, coordination, as far as I could tell, and, and very little communication. Okay. Um, I think part of the reason this went so um, badly is that so Toussaint, who was arrested, was meant to be the police mediator. So he was supposed to be communicating with right. the police. Right. Were, were, were you both aware that pe people had planned on being arrested, correct? A couple of people, but not Tucson. Were, 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 were the people planning on being arrested? I mean, were they expecting some sort of reaction like this from the police, do you think, to go no, in there expecting not. to be arrested? No. The University of Chicago Political Union, a new debate RSO, had its inaugural meetings Monday and Tuesday of last week. Built as a nonpartisan forum for political discourse, the union hopes to provide a new venue for students to engage in spirited discussion about current events and goings on at the university. Union founder Hope Yao, a third year, has said that the Institute of Politics backed RSO is modeled after debate societies at Yale and Oxford, and that, quote, they have served as the stomping grounds for some of today's foremost politicians, political theorists, and pundits. New members of the group were recently emailed political quizzes to aid in the formation of ideology-based parties, which will serve as the structural basis for the debates. The University of Chicago Political Union meets every Monday at 7 p.m. in Stewart 105. The newly opened Harper Theater, a major part of the ongoing development taking place on 53rd Street, has already received a warm reception from the community. Maroon TV's Osita Wanevu stopped by. Just off 53rd Street, the return of a long-gone Hyde Park institution has the community buzzing. On January 18th, movie operator The New 400 Theaters reopened a renovated Harper Theater over a decade since the original theater's closing and purchased by the university. Since opening, reception from the community has been warm. Longtime residents and students alike have come in to see new releases, 
For the university, uh, there's been a lot of students coming and seeing the movies. A lot of people are excited for the movies that we're showing. Um, we're mostly showing independent art-based movies, uh, with the occasionally a wide release. The original theater opened almost a century ago in 1913, and until its closing in 2002, was one of the few places outside of downtown where Southsiders could see wide-release films. Plans to reopen the space as part of the university's Harper Court Development Project emerged late last year. General Manager Jacqueline Crooks says that the theater's opening was initially hampered by red tape from city officials. We opened January 18th. Uh, we did have a couple setbacks mostly with our licensing, some unexpected delays. Um, but for the moment, so far, so good. The state-of-the-art theater has five screens, comfortable seating, and 3D projection capability. The screening rooms themselves are much smaller than those at major theaters, like AMC's River East, which allows for a much more intimate and cozy viewing experience. This week, we got Hyde Park on Hudson, Black of Pie in 3D, uh, Silver Linings Playbook, and Zero Dark Thirty. Though it's only been open for a few weeks, it seems sure that Harper Theatre will be an important part of student life and the life of the greater Hyde Park community for the foreseeable future. The movies, you Chicago, are once again at a theater near you. For Maroon TV News, I'm Osita Wanevu. We now go to political analyst Sean Graff for an interview with some University of Chicago students about immigration reform. Joining me today is Manuela Londonia from the Coalition for uh, Immigrant Rights from University of Chicago and Jorge Sanchez from Mexicanos and UChicago. Can you finally tell me what is your group doing to try to push for more immigration reform? Like how, how as college students can, can something be accomplished, can something be done to really encourage policymakers to take a serious look at encouraging more immigration to the United States? So the, the University of Chicago Coalition for Immigrant Rights, or rather USO, we definitely fight for a lot of um, student issues on campus, especially with um, immigrant issues or undocumented issues. Um, we've, been, we've been working alongside the administration to make sure that this campus is friendly and is a supportive space for undocumented students. We have had undocumented students in the past, and we want to make sure that undocumented students, especially in high school, know that they can apply to the University of Chicago and that they will find support here. Okay. Now we go to Vicente Fernandez for sports. Thanks, Taylor. In UChicago women's basketball. Maroons try to avenge case at Ratner after losing to the Spartans in Ohio last week. With Chicago down five and the two minutes left in the first, Caitlin Moore grabs a steal and the Maroons are off to the races. Madness ensues, finally giving Moore the ball back, who passes it with flair to a wide open Paige Walmack, makes a bucket, and one. Womack finishes with a team high 15 points. Taking it late in the second half, less than 30 seconds left, down by two, game on the line. But don't tell that to Julie McGuera, who hits his silky smooth corner three to put the Maroons up one. But the following possession, Ellie Griner fouls Evie Iacono, who sinks her first but misses a second with less than 10 seconds left. Claire Devaney attempts to be the Maroons' savior, driving the court on her own, gets hacked with four seconds left, and can put the game away at the charity stripe. Silence at the Ratner Center with all eyes fixed on the second here. After missing the first, Devaney puts up the second and rims out. We're headed to overtime. After a back and forth OT, the Spartans put the game away at the line. Case beats Chicago 76 to 71. The Maroons drop to six and 13 overall and two and six in conference play. On the men's side, Maroons already on a 13-5 run early in the first and Wayne Simon tries to make the lead larger on his own and he does and one. Simon finished with 13 points on the night. Maroons up 37-27 going into the locker room. Jumping to the second half, Jordan Smith picks up the loose ball, and being the crowd pleaser that he is, he slams it in. The Maroons not only doing damage inside as perimeter passing gets it to Charlie Hughes, fakes, and drains a tray. Hughes led all scorers with 17 points. Chicago wins the game 81-73. That puts the Maroons at 9-10 on the season and 3-5 in UAA play. In other news, UChicago men's track took seventh at the Wisconsin Whitewater Invitational on Friday. Those were this week's top stories. For more news and extended interviews, visit our YouTube channel and like our Facebook page. My name is Taylor Schwimmer, and this was Maroon TV News. Study on, UChicago. Maroon TV's Facebook page is the source for all of Maroon TV's latest happenings. Visit www.facebook.com slash maroontv.